Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm going to talk about the problem accounts merge. And more specifically, we're going to explore the DSU or the union find approach in detail. Don't worry, I'm also going to explain the intuitions I took to get to the solution, as well as how to implement that in Python 3. Let's get started. All right, let's talk about the problem statement. The question gives us some accounts and we have to return some modified accounts. All right. The condition says that if there is a common e email between two names, merge their email lists into one in sorted order. All right. So for an example, we have John over here as one particular name and John has two corresponding emails y, X and Y. Similarly, Mary is one person who has this email A associated with her. Then we have John having X and Z and John having P. So one of the key points of this question is that there can be multiple people with the same name, but there can also be uh, multiple different lists of the same people. So the thing is, this John contains two emails X and Y, and this John over here contains two emails X and Z. Because there is a common email between both of these, which is the email X, and the condition says that if there's a common email between the two names, merge the email lists into one. Basically saying that both of these Johns are actually the same person. So we'll take this John having XY, this John having XZ as the emails, and we'll merge that into a list of John XYZ. Mary is the only one over here, so we'll put A for her, that's fine. And we have this John over here with the email as P. Now this P is not common across anywhere else, which means that this particular John is a completely different person from this John. Right, so we have these two different Johns and one Mary. So now that we understand the problem statement better, how do we go about the solution? All right, let's talk about the observation logic needed to solve this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is reformat things a bit because uh, the IRA format wasn't exactly intuitive or well, good looking. So I just reformatted that. And now we have this John corresponding to two different emails, X and Y. Similarly, Mary has this A, John has XZ, and this John has P. This is exactly what we saw before. Now, what's the goal of this problem? The goal of this problem is to somehow figure out that this John and this John are actually really the same person. And they're really the same person because they have a common email X and X between them. Right? So we want to say that because this John and this John are the same person, we want to take all of their emails and unite them into one giant list. We want to merge all of these emails into one list. What's happening over here? We are saying that this John over here is, is one person has some emails and this John over here is one person having some emails. Now, both of these aren't two different people. They're the same person. And when we figure out, and as soon as we figure out they are the same person, we want to unite and merge all of their emails together. This merging is what hints us at the use of a disjoint set union. And this is the intuition behind coming to this logic of using a DSU in the first place. All right, uh, just to show this is the DSU part I've implemented over here. Again, I'm going to link it, uh, link resources down below as well as on the info card up over here somewhere that uh, where you can go ahead and look at this DSU implementation from scratch. But this is going to be a very standard implementation of DSU, which has uh, path compression as well as union by size. So it's the most efficient version of DSU, right? Super simple. This is a, just borrowing code from a different program. That's it. All right. Okay, so how can we get started with the solution? We know that we have to use DSU, but uh, what about DSU then? Since the goal is to really figure out that these two names are the same person, we want to say, we, and we want to have this ability to unite both of these names together. So it's the email lists correspond to this name, which is the second step. But really, if you can figure out that this name and this name are the same, then things will be easier for us. So in the disjoint set union, I'm going to initialize DSU as DSU over here. And I want to initialize with the size of N, where N is just going to be the length of accounts. All right. 
uh, what am I trying to do over here? So in this case, say for example, we have John, Mary, John, John. So there are four different names, which means that the DSU will have a size of four. And we want to somehow have these uh, representatives and the sizes mess around so that we have the knowledge that this John is really the same as this John. That is it, right? So DSU is a very simple use of this case. Okay, now what? We have the DSU in place, we have the names in place, but really the linking only happens through emails, right? Because we can only say that this John and this John are the same person because they have this common email X in between them. So the first thing we want to do is get hold of these emails, all right? So we'll create a for loop and we'll iterate over all the accounts uh, for account in accounts. And uh, I want to iterate over for email in all the emails. Now emails is simply account of one colon, which basically says that, uh, so skip over the zeroth element and from the first element onwards, get me the rest of the list. And you can see that this is the format we've also been given. So zeroth element is the name, first element is the email, then next element is an email and so on and so forth. All right, so now that we have the access to emails, what do we do? If you realize when we iterate over all these emails one by one, so we have John first, then we'll iterate over X, then Y, then we'll have Mary, then A, John, then X and Z, and then John and P. As we iterate over these emails one by one, we'll realize that, you know what, this X is something we've already seen before, right? We can, of course, visually see, but we can also write some, uh, maybe a dictionary or a set that can tell us, hey, you know what, this X, this X over here is uh, something I've seen before. Yeah, which means, what does that mean? If this particular X is something I've seen before, it means that this X obviously corresponds to this particular element, sure, but it also corresponds to some previous element, right? This X must have pointed to some name before and it's now pointing to some other name which means that both of these persons, which X is pointing to are the same person. So uh, I want to somehow create this pointing, right? I want to say that, uh, you know, this X points to this person. So I want to create a mapping from email to name, right? We'll do that first, which is just going to be a dictionary. And how do we fill that dictionary up? We'll say that for each of these emails and accounts, um, I want to say email to name, name of this current email is equals to the name. All right, what is the name? Um, instead of doing and messing around with the names, let's just use indices because that is what we use for the DSU. So instead of a name, as we have in DSU, we'll just use index of the name I. Cool. And we can also get the index of the name from this and we'll do enumerate accounts. All right, cool. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it should make more sense now. So now that we have the access to the emails and the names and the, their like corresponding mappings, we can finally come on to what we discussed before. If we are seeing this X for the second time, if the email is inside of this email to name dictionary, then we are seeing it for the second time which means that the current I, this current I is actually a different element than what email to name of I pointed to. Both of these are two different names that we can unite. And this is why we can write it as such. And uh, just to write it down in a bit better way, I wanna say, uh, you know what? If email, not in email to name, in other words, we are seeing it for the first time. I can do this and uh, I'll just write else over here. Cool. I'm bringing it closer to the official implementation. So you can look at it in C++ or Java as well as you need. Cool. So now that we have this in place, we're mostly done. Like we have completed a large part of the solution. See, part of the solution was to figure out that this John and this John are the same person. And we've already done that because we have united both of these I and this email to name of I, sorry, uh, email to name of email. 
uh, we're inputting it an email and it's going to convert it to a name index, right? So we basically have the information of this and this guy are the same. Both of these have been united already. The disjoint set union has this information with it. All right, so now that we have all of the information present inside of the DSU, uh, what can we do of that? Well, we can try and now figure out, uh, okay, corresponding to the person John, we have X, Y, and Z. And now I want to start building this information more formally. Because up till now, the only thing we've realized is that this John and this John are the same. But we haven't merged both of them together, right? We only have that information inside the DSU. So let's go ahead and extract it out. How can we do that? Well, let's first get hold of the email. And from that email, we can find out the email to name. So I can go ahead and find out the corresponding name, right? So for the email Z, I have the corresponding name as John. That's fine. All right. From this name, I can go ahead and do dsu.find. And I can find out who the person is behind the name. Okay. So I can find out who the person is behind the name. And I can see that, you know what, for that person, uh, so I'm going to write components and for that person, I'm going to add the corresponding email, which is this email. All right. Uh, I'm going to say for email in email to name dot keys and we'll iterate like so. We'll also say uh, components is a default dict of uh, set. Cool. So what's happening over here? Just to formally show once more. We're looking at an email and we're iterating over all the emails one by one, which by the way, uh, this email to name is a dictionary. So all of these keys are unique and all of these emails we are iterating over are unique because repeating over the same email again and again is not really making sense. So we'll iterate over all the unique emails, find their names, then find the representative name or the person behind that name. And for that person, we are going to access its component and add this email to it. So this is sort of the visual representation of what's going on. I know it's a bit circular, but uh, that is it what we're doing. All right, cool. So now that we have the components in hand, the only thing left to do really is to reformat an output. So I'm going to create answer as a list and return answer at the end. And now I want to say for key comma value in components dot item, I want to iterate over all the keys and all the values. And each key, by the way, is what? A uh, key comes from components key, and this is going to be dsu.finds result. And dsu.finds result is a representative, which means that this key is actually an index. So I'm going to go to accounts of this particular key, access the zeroth element, which is the actual name now. Up till now, I was only messing around with the indices. Like you can also see over here, over here, and here. I was just messing with the indices. I didn't really touch the names, but now that we have to actually output, I'm going to access the name at the zeroth place. All right. And along with this name, I also want the sorted. I want the sorted list of all of the items in V. What is V, by the way? V is just a set of all the emails corresponding to the kth person. All right, cool. All of this information is now something we can do answer dot append. I'm going to also make it a list over here. Yeah, so this will work out. And this is just going to be one giant list of all of the values we need. All right, it has no, uh, yeah, it is not an existent. You want to go for items. Cool, yeah, this works. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sum with this. And we get runtime as 192 milliseconds faster than 90% of the people. What the hell? Wow, that's amazing. Also, don't stress too much about the runtimes. You can see a lot of variation in them. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is it for the problem accounts merge. Good.